There we go. Recording. <laughs> well, I've got it's eleven o'clock, Ryan, so we yep, can start whenever we get started here, guys. Hey, thank you everyone for joining the video conference gear and Nareva webinar. And one of the products we wanted to talk about today was is the Nareva HDL 300. What's been unique about the 300 is it's been kind of displacing the world of traditional, um, you know, traditional installed conference room audio. And when what makes it unique is we get lots of people asking us for wireless audio solutions. And to, honestly, there's a huge gap in the industry for cost-effective audio solutions. Our, most of our ceiling audio solutions are around three grand. But then they ask for wireless, and we're bumping up to the six grand option for a Zoom room with wireless audio. But what makes the Nareva difference is it's just simple and easy to install with nothing to configure. So we wanted to give you a quick demo with that as I'll bring on Adrian Doherty of Nareva soon. But to give you an idea, on the Nareva, what, you know, we can kind of look at we kind of take a step back first. What is the traditional room of installed audio that we do, where we do our standard huddle rooms of bringing this presentation up, that, you know, where we have a simple tabletop audio, where we usually did, you know, whether it's like the Revo Labs or Phoenix Audio or numerous other brands are sitting on the table or one option. And most people are, they work in most small huddle rooms of situations and they're just fine. But then the next step is, is going to installed wire audio, where we're either running microphones to the table or to the ceiling is one option. And we do this a lot in classrooms too with just hanging four ceiling microphones in a classroom to capture the room. But what we found is a unique thing over the past year working closely with Nareva is their solution works. It's actually fascinating how the quality you get out of the Nareva side, if not better than some of the installed room kits we do. And here's a great example of the Nareva and where it looks pretty much like a sound bar a little bit bigger, but includes the microphones, it includes microphones where they do a unique 4,000 plus virtual microphones and leverage the wall that, in the back there. But what makes this unique and one of the only caveats, and I don't know if it's caveats or it's a little bit of a con, and however you want to look at it is, if you notice, the Nareva is mounted a few inches, about like 12 inches above the monitor. This is for it to, whoops, that is for it to pick up sound quality, leverage the wall for microphone capture. And you're gonna see here in a quick demo. So that has been the only caveat and trouble we've ran into because with one, our first install was mounting too close to the monitor. But I always kind of use a general rule of thumb as 12 inches around the microphone, around the speaker bar gives a proc great space. We can get by with less, but just I always leverage the 12 inches. And before we jump into the demo here, what is the Nareva system? It's pretty simple. It's one big sound bar, as you can see here, and it runs back to a connect module via a standard Cat5 cable into the box, and then the USB to the computer. But what's nice now is they have coming out in, it'll be shipping in July, I think the first shipments are in June, but they're a little backed up because of popular demand, is we'll be able to run two of these guys in the same rooms, two Nareva HDL 300s for rooms over, you know, when we're above 30 by 30 feet. So we're gonna see a quick little demo here, you know, how the, what the, you know, here's an example of going into larger classrooms with things. So I'm going to turn it over to Adrian to give you a real life demo on the world of Nareva and what we see here. Adrian, would you like to chat about, you give us your options of how the video is going to work for you? Absolutely. Thanks, Ryan. So uh, I'm here in the largest conference room we have in our building. It is 26 feet long by 18 feet wide, and you all can see the HDL 300 on the wall to my left there. Now, like Ryan mentioned, what's different about what we do is there are no wireless mics. There's nothing hanging from the ceiling. I'm not wearing a lapel. It's those 8,192 virtual microphones that we push out and fill the space that give me the freedom of movement. I can go anywhere I want, I can face any direction I want, and I can be confident that you can clearly hear me. Think about your big group meetings, think about a classroom where you've got lots of people talking. Uh, lots of different profiles of speaker as well. It's not just people with a loud voice like me. What if you had someone who was a bit of a soft speaker talking in the corner, or even facing directly away from the unit? 
Some standard audio challenges in this room too. Glass walls, 50% glass, a table that seats 16 in the middle, highly reflective, and then interactive surfaces on the wall. And it's not just being able to move around either. Uh, most meetings have a stand-sit option, right? One presenter, many people sitting and working together. Now what happens when people sit down and work together? They actually type. So we have active echo cancellation built into the unit. So I'm here now about 20 feet away from it, just typing away and I'll shut up for a second so you can hear the keyboards clicking. And now as I speak again, the HDL focuses on my voice. It doesn't take out all of that backroom noise because you want that remote listener to feel connected to the room. We call that the natural audio experience. This room also has HVAC, we're filtering that out. Lots of different options, and like Brian mentioned, it is very simple to set up. Not only does the unit connect via standard USB to the computer, it is also self-calibrating. And as you guys know, it's a very different experience whether you have one person in here by yourself or 10 other people. Thanks to the HDL300, I don't actually have to go to a complicated piece of software or mess with a DSP, it really just works. Uh, it self-calibrates and gives me the right mics for the right place. Hey, Adrian, one of the questions we got from people is like, how does the Nariva work within like a large open space air office area where we get a lot of all hands types meeting rooms? It just kind of doubles as the lunch room and having the simple Nariva set up there. What's kind of the experience been with customers in that scenario? Sure. So that is, I'll, I'll, can I, I'm going to answer that twice. So the first answer is the single Nareva is, is dedicated, is good for spaces up to 30 feet by 30 feet. So mm -hmm. a fair amount bigger than this room. And thanks to the noise canceling and the fact that the HDL focuses on the active speaker, that noise will get filtered out. So in a situation like that, Ryan, there's usually a presenter talking and that's what the HDL will focus on. We did have a very recent customer, a, a university, ask us to help them with a large auditorium type room and that's where the dual HDL came in. So those two units set up on opposing walls 12 feet off the ground, a very open space, but that room seats 100 students and they wanted to use it not just for lesson capture, which is super valuable, but also to capture the questions from the audience. Nobody has to run around with a microphone, nobody's got to send in a text message, they're just able to talk. How has been the response for, you know, let's call it universities, educational install, you know, installs for that, which is kind of a, usually most rooms are in that 30 by 30 ballpark. They are, and they have a tough time, especially with the growth of remote learning and people doing distance learning, people attending classes from home, people attending from all over the world. What we've seen is a great uptick, and those spaces tend to be challenging, right? Like I said, the raised flooring, but it's not just that those rooms that have 100 desks. So imagine 100 individual ref reflective surfaces. They also need to get audio into those rooms. So they don't have to complicate their installation by wiring speakers through the ceiling or doing gooseneck microphones to every desk. They simply put the two HDLs on the wall and the 20 watt speakers fill this space perfectly. Mm -hmm. Where is, you know, when business use case rooms, are we usually seeing this in boardrooms or large conference rooms like this? What have you seen as a game changer with your system compared to competitor systems? This, this room is a really good example of a larger type room. We typically get called in into modern buildings, uh, rooms of 15 by 15 and greater is where we really specialize because we remove all of the complexity, right? You mentioned the price, the $29.99 MSRP off the top, but it's, it's not just that, right? When you look at doing a room this big, if you're no longer wiring speakers, you're not paying a service tech to come in and cut holes and wire everything. You're also not paying for continual configuration if you don't have the ability to do it yourself. So that's where we've really come in. We simplify that using Zoom and the Zoom room system. We are a plug and play option that just support each other very well. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Let's see, I think we have another question that came in here. You know, I guess it's about asking if we have any multiple people. I apologize. We didn't schedule this for multiple people in your room to give you this, Raymond, of showing multiple people talking there. It's just everyone's getting ready for Infocom at Nariva next week. So it's kind of some things going on there for staffing. But um, what, you know, if you have any, and Raymond's one of my great university clients that does this distance learning classrooms and any advice you'd have for deploying this in the university scenarios? So distance learning is, is as simple as connecting it to a USB, right? You, you 
connected to the in-room system and you're good to go. There's no, there's nothing different than hosting your system the way you normally would, except now you don't have to wear a lapel. You don't have to get it back to a charger. You just walk around and talk. What about auto tuning features is, you know, does that, how does the Nariva work there when you deal with a room from, let's say, sitting two people in that room, to having a call to up to, let's say, 15, 20 people? How does the Nariva do anything different in those situations? It does. So the unit self calibrates like we talked about, right? If we had 20 people in here, it would make sure the microphones were in the right place at the right time, regardless of where the speaker was. That said, everyone likes to have a different sound available to them, right? Some people like more treble, some people like less bass. And we, should, we will be releasing a new version of our audio manager software to help manage that. So as of tomorrow, you'll be able to manage those levels and build your individual profile yourself. I think one of the most fascinating things for us at Video Conference Gear is we work with so many different clients, so many different spots around the globe. And part of what I like is products that can be installed, self-installed by clients and don't require additional programming or anything like that. So either we're happy to install it for you or it's really just mounting the speaker bar, running a Cat5 cable back to where the PC is in the room. And what's the distance there, by the way, of how far we can go on a Cat5 cable? So we use PoE cables. You can we've tested up to 200 feet away from the bar. Okay, are you using shielded or unshielded, and does that matter in the installation? We ship it unshielded. It does not matter. Okay. Um, any other? You know, I guess. Or is it? You know, what I really like, especially from our hand point of view, is no configurations going on in the park where I'm not having to get into a DSP to go make auto changes, tweaks, adjustments, setting presets. It's kind of one of those devices that you just install and forget about and it just continually works and it's transparent to you as a user, which is to me the right way most AV devices should be instead of always having to rely on calling your techs if you wanted to make changes to the room, adjust the tables. We don't have to worry about those acoustic changes with the Nariva as it just automatically adjusts and I hate to say this word, surprisingly, it proved me wrong. I wasn't expecting how good the quality was of the Nariva. And also after about 50 plus installations we've done with clients and not one single complaint are coming back. So this is a huge product that we stand behind as a differentiator to do audio differently in conference rooms that we haven't seen before. Ryan, there are many non-believers like you who, who don't trust us. And once they put one in, uh, they are believers. You, you mentioned something interesting I just want to hit on, and it's that simplicity of installation. Mm -hmm. It really should be that easy. The HDL 300 comes with three different cables. Okay. Three. Think of another system that could do a room this big for microphones and audio, move around, echo cancellation, that could be installed in half an hour by virtually anyone. That is a differentiator. People love that. That, that is a change, you know, especially some of these people going into the older, moving into older cities with pre-established built, you know, old buildings that are being retrofitted, you know, to current office spaces. We don't have to drill, make heavy installed architectural changes to get this into the room. Yeah. One of the things, I'll just tell a story about this building. So we rented this building. It was recently redone and we had them replace about eight ceiling tiles in every meeting room we have because when we moved in, we took out all of their legacy system, which gave us a ton of rack and cupboard space and use HDLs in all of our rooms. Great. Yeah. I think, let's see if there's any other questions, a couple of questions here. Um, so I think Jason asks, is, you know, is Adrian sitting down and speaking into the Nariva right now? Yes. Well, he can sit down. He's really kind of demonstrating the availability of just moving around to adjust the different audio levels. But Adrian, I'll just sit and answer some questions there. All right. And if you notice, you know, the one you if correct this speak this room only has the one bar and with the one single Nariva in it versus the new dual system that's coming out shortly, right? That's right. It's the unit directly behind me with the blue light on it on the video. And how would you, you know, one of my, I guess kind of, you know, my thought that goes back of customers thinking is, how is it with the sound coming from the side versus from the front where the monitors are? And also, I think in some rooms, tell me you can mount this in front by the monitor as well. And is this anything, what do customers say after time of having it mounted off to the sides or different areas for you? So it's funny, we mount it off to the side so that it's on the video, but most installations are aligned to the display. We do a lot of work on our span system there, which right. is why it, it makes sense for us there, but a lot of people in a single display room will mount it above the display. Great. Um, 
So I have John Roll asked, you know, they have a room in the UK with a lot of ambient noise coming from the outside. You know, how does the net, you know, outside where all the streets, you know, cars buzzing by and things like that, how does the Nariva perform in those situations? Yeah, so because of the noise cancelling, the active noise cancellation built right into the unit and the constant adjustment, it will start to filter out all of that noise over time. Its first setup takes about 10 seconds and then it sends an inaudible tone every minute, even while we're on it right now, to make sure it's got those levels correct. Uh, another thing we can do uh, as of tomorrow, John, is you'll actually have the ability to set uh, the aggressivity of the cancellation, so you can make it more aggressive versus less aggressive, which will help in your specific situation. And that's always been a you know, hard issue for some of these other rooms we've been doing and programming a DSP correctly to get the high pass, look, all the right filters, things there. It's nice to hear there's a simple solution to just do it and be done and without having to go to a class for work. You know, um, Renee Carver just asked, you know, how does it, and we kind of discussed this a little bit as you joined late, no biggie, but it's how does this work in this, you know, classrooms with Zoom? And we've talked about that a little bit, but I think we're kind of in that, I always thought, you know, that 30 by 30 is kind of a walk, you know, a little bit of that higher, some classrooms are that size, some are bigger. So we have that option now to go to a single or dual, which is more beneficial for the future. But what have you, what are some, you know, in the K-12 environment, what have you been seeing for classrooms with the Nariva? K-12 environments have, have been a little bit more rare than everything else, frankly, uh, but really we see the exact same thing. With all those humans in the room, kids like to move and shuffle lots of papers. So mm -hmm. the real benefit is the, the noise reduction that they get, and if someone is attending remotely, they still feel connected to all the people working together in that space. Great. So and moving chairs, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just going from chair to chair. Yeah, to give that extra expense, I appreciate it. You know, one of the areas is one of my clients, they teach their K-12 organization and they teach Spanish for distance learning. And we've learned, you know, children aren't speaking the most loud, projected confidently in some of these newer languages. How, you know, when we work with the different variables of voice levels from a, you know, instructor presenting in the room to a soft-spoken child, what's kind of the experience we're seeing there in the Nariva installed environment? Yeah, we have lots of different types of speakers here, and that's one of the things we'll be showing off at Infocom is we've gotten some of our softest speakers who will be talking. I don't have a soft voice, but I, I can lower it and talk a little quieter so you can hear it pick up. It takes a second to adjust to me, but it does work just as well. Great. Um, anything else you'd like to add, um, Adrian, about the, your, your HDL 300? So one of the questions we get that always surprises me, is it available in different colors? And the answer is yes, comes in black and white, uh, both for the dual and the single. White is often used in medical environments where they want the tech to kind of blend into the room so that patients aren't freaking out about all the lights and things happening. Okay, and can't, let's say we some clients have bought an existing Nariva and it's, they put it in a room that it's, Let's just say it's beyond the size capabilities for that room. Can they upgrade to a second Nariva at a reduced cost and add that on? They can. We have an upgrade kit that'll be available uh, as of June. It'll be shipping in June. Like you said, it'll be available in June. Uh, and it is an upgrade kit. The second bar actually connects to that same connect module you had on your slide. So two units off of a single connection. So in short, going to a larger room for audio, we're just running two Cat5 cables, or two standard Ethernet cables to the devices. That's right. Simple, but very compared to some of the larger rooms of running a microphone cable, each microphone back to a DSP, and programming and adjusting, so the time savings are incredible with installing the Nariva, and set it and forget it. So it's exciting to see a new product like this that's taking a different way to do the audio in conference rooms is I think it's been more of a retrofit DSPs to the conference rooms. Granted, they're making a lot towards conference room technologies, but this is a whole new paradigm shift on how to create simplicities of use in a large room and roll out to many rooms at once and not have much to you know technically manage or troubleshoot. So Adrian, I wanted to thank you very much for your time and demo, greatly appreciated. And for those of you guys going to Infocom, please come see us at booth N1276. Oh, real quick question that came up at the end here was, any issues on Mac compatibility? No, it uses the standard Mac audio drivers and you can update the firmware using a firmware installer, no problem.
And you have a Mac-based firmware and update software as well? We, we have a Mac-based firmware updater. We're actively looking at the audio manager for Mac as well. Right now, if you were to update your firmware tomorrow, we have a separate installer for Mac. Okay, that's great to know. But currently, as of this time, when we're, if we're looking at this later on YouTube, as we're doing this in May of 2018, you cannot do the audio manager on Mac, is that right? But it's coming? That Right now, it's Windows only, yes. Okay, great. Thank you, appreciate it. The USB cable, it needs to be USB 2.0 or above. Great, M much appreciated. So, thank you everyone, and appreciate your time, and please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions, and we're happy to help with the world in Arriva. Thank you, and have a great day.